Hey everyone, Cursed Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks assisted, and here we are with our second donation deck of the week with Amzu, Swarm's Hunger, a insect kindred deck, almost a tribal. I will get that at one point, I promise. This deck comes to us from Lexa, who says, This commander looks so cool, I just had to build him. Don't know why the Clue product just made banger after banger of interesting designs. I need someone to tell me which pieces I have in are currently too cute and won't cut it and I should replace for more ramp, more interaction. Yes, I am here for you on that. And thank you, Lexa, for supporting the channel again. This is a fun looking deck. There's a lot of work to be done and I'm interested in helping you get that work done. If you'd like to take a look at the deck list we're talking about today, or if you'd like to submit your own deck list to me so that I can make a video assisting your deck, please check the video description down below. But before we get anywhere further, let's talk about Amzu Swarm's Hunger. What exactly do they do, and what do they bring to Insect Kindred? They're a 5 mana Golgari card, Insect Shaman, that's a green-black, 3-3, Flying Menace, other insects you control have menace. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, you may create a 1-1 black and green insect creature token, then put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the greatest mana value among those cards. Do this only once each turn. What does this mean? How do we use this? Well, there's two main parts to Amzu. The easy part is that Amzu is just generally kind of a strong insect and giving menace and having menace, especially flying menace, makes it a very good attacker and makes your insects really hard to block. But that second ability is really interesting. There's some hoop jumping to be done, but the prize you get for it is pretty cool. So whenever your creatures leave your graveyard, that means that can go into exile, go to the battlefield, to your hand, wherever. They just need to not be in the graveyard. You create one token and whatever was the greatest mana cost of creature or cards because it's not just creatures of cards you put that many plus one plus one counters onto the insect and you get that once each turn so what that means is what we really want is to once per turn uh, like remove a very high cmc creature from the graveyard and then create a very large insect this is kind of tokens but it's kind of not because you're creating only a singular token and it's a hefty one. Traditionally, when we look at tokens, we imagine a swarm of small insects, such as what Gris produces, not this kind of smaller group of very, very large insects. I think it's funny that the art shows this unending swarm of creatures, when in reality, you're gonna have a small cluster of very, very strong creatures. Now, looking at the deck proper, there's a lot that I could say about it. Now, first of all, obviously we are very low on lands for a deck that has a curve that goes on all the way to 8 mana, though there are emerge costs, or 7 mana for Hornet Queen. We also are quite heavy on creatures, we have about 38 creatures in here, and we have almost no ramp. We have some interaction. Beast Within Assassin's Trophy. Nothing too terrible, I do like it. I think we could have one or two, uh, but we don't need too, too many. And Lexa is asking for like, what is too cute so we could put some, you know, some ramp in as well. Now I'm not gonna, because of that, I'm not gonna talk too much about the ramp we could be putting in. I think generally here you can get away with a lot of very good ramp. Uh, anything that like taps our creatures for mana is very strong here because we're very, very creature based. Anything that is two mana and puts a land into play is also very good. And I think I have one more that I'm putting in as a suggestion. So all that's good. Let's do a bit of a look and see what we want to keep. Now, what too cute means to one person means something else to another. For me, it is generally creatures that have nothing going for them outside of the fact that they are insects. So there's a few of them here like that. So like for example, something like Sludge Titan that's not an insect has a very, very relevant ability that's very, very strong in this deck. And so this is perfect and fine. However, something instead such as the Zanikev Locust, which is a six mana three, three with a scavenge ability. So it does have a little more synergy because we can exile this, get a trigger and put three plus one plus one counters on a creature. 
is still incredibly cute to me because you neither want to cast this card nor how badly do you want to scavenge this card. This card feels a bit like filler. It's only really here for insect as an ability uh, as a as a creature type. And I'm fine with that if we were playing Grist because Grist benefits from playing every single insect we can get away with. However, we aren't playing Grist, so we should be a little more let's say, uh, critical of the insects that we're playing. Now, for a lot of reasons, I like the insect creature token that we can get from a lot of things, from both crawling enchantments, uh, we can get from a few of these creatures, such as Hornet's Nest or Hornet Queen, and so far, those are great, I really do like those, so I don't want to cut too much down on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to look through our creatures backwards, I'm going to try not to spend too much time on this, and I'm going to because I have a lot of additions actually that I want to talk about. So we're going to go in uh, quickly and see what we can do. It of the Horrid Swarm feels okay. I do like the fact that it is three insects and it can be as cheap as, let's say, reasonably a four mana insect. Is that reasonable here? We have a bunch of threes and fours. So between three and four, making it, you know, between actually three and four mana, seven minus three or four. So I think this is fine. I really like the high CMC. This this part will also cover Distended Mindbender. I really like that they have high CMC, so if we put them into the graveyard and pull them out, we are putting an insect with like eight plus one plus one counters on it, which I think is very strong. I love the Eldrazi insects. I love Emerge. I think this is fantastic. Hornet Queen is fine. I, I think Hornet Queen is better with reanimation and ways to put it in our graveyard, and we are doing that, so I have no problem with the Hornet Queen here very easy it is a creature that puts out four insects in addition to itself which is fantastic anyone who's face down hornet queen knows it is just a beating because it represents like almost four to five you know really good blocks against your creatures because sometimes they'll leave the hornet queen to blink it or they'll throw out the hornet queen early in order to just reanimate it again so hornet queen also fantastic menace is kind of wasted here uh actually yeah, because they're 1-1s. One if you can get them, the Hornet Queen itself benefits from Menace because it gets to kill both of its blockers, but all of the other 1-1 one, one green uh, insect tokens with Flying and Death Touch, they'll still only kill one creature with Menace, which isn't ideal. Like I said, Xanakev Locust feels a little cute. Sludge to uh, Titan is very strong. Dreadhound, I feel like... I feel like I'd rather this kind of be a lower mana aristocrat's effect, right? Uh, I do like that this triggers off of creatures being put into the graveyard from library, so our self mill. Uh, this this is more of a grist card than I think uh, of a uh, Amzu card, but it's interesting enough that I'm not completely against it. I think I'd prefer something a bit lower mana because at the end of the day, this is just kind of a clunky six mana card, whereas this ability, at least the first half especially, whenever a creature dies, you could get off of like Zulaport Cutthroat or something like that. Zask is fine. Uh, Zask is, I would say, probably an alternative commander at this point. Not with the additions I'm going to put in, but a general kind of uh, black-green, you know, insect commander. I will say, obviously, that ability, the second ability is really, really good because the creature has to go into the graveyard to die, and it doesn't say instead, so then you will get the trigger. However, I don't love the fact we don't have a lot of control over this. I think it's fine. I think this is a card that like will feel good, but is five mana as well, so it is clunky. Springleaf Avenger, I think is too cute. Five mana as a creature is a lot. The ninjutsu is cool, but sometimes you're only gonna have tokens in ninjutsu, which isn't ideal. Uh, I do like the fact that whenever it deals damage, you get to return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, triggering our commander, and obviously giving it menace makes it stronger. Even then, I do feel it's a bit clunky. 6-5 is a very good stat line for an insect. It's close. This one's very close. I would put this on the maybe to cut pile. Query be Beetle at 5 mana, we can do much better. This is, this is too much. I will suggest some 5 mana cards that do kind of, you know, uh, coincide with our commander's mana cost. The bar has to be much, much higher. Just getting a land from graveyard to battlefield, it's too much. I'm sure we can just do this instead with, um, what is that card? The, uh, 
the snake. Uh, there is a snake from Amonkhet that works that you can play land cart lands from your graveyard. That'll work the same way, but it's a three mana creature. I would recommend that or anything else. There's quite a few creatures that let you in green that let you play lands from your graveyard. I would do that instead of it being like an ETB on a five mana creature, even if it's an insect. Uh, Moldgraf Millipede, uh, just a little cute. Uh, it's nice that it ETB mills, but it is once again five mana. That's a little too much. Decimator Beetle, same thing. Minus one, minus one counters on a target creature. Not really what we're doing. Its ability is kind of cute that you get to then move that onto some, uh, that minus one, minus one counter onto another person's creature. But you have to attack that person. It's too much. It's, it's too much for a card that's just a four or five. Uh, I do really like it as a flavor in lower power minus one, minus one uh, decks, but this not here i don't think timeless witness is fine timeless witness and ewit i think are really great ways to be using this ability from your commander and the fact that eternalize triggers also triggers this uh, by exiling it creating the uh, copy but since your commander only triggers once this is more useful with something like uh let's see with something like insidious roots or uh, another one i'm going to suggest where i think it's a little better still this is just a good card, and I think you'll be happy running it, so that's pretty easy. Uh, Saber Ants, uh, this works kind of like our uh, Hornet Nest. Outside of Green Red, it's really hard for us to deal that damage to it, and so you want to Blasphemous Act this card, right? And we just don't have the means to do so, so I think this is a little too cute here. Rot Farm Mortipede. This is interesting. I like I like this one a lot more, like with the theme. I don't love that it's one or more, but I do like that you can do it as many times as you want. I think in theory, this creature will represent being like a 5-4 with uh, uh, Menace and Lifelink. But since it's already getting Menace from our commander, I don't think we need this. Once again, this is a power level check. I think this is fine at a much lower power level. Like, unlike the other cards, it's not five mana, it's in theme. It's a really interesting creature in the fact that it grows and gains life link and menace. But even then, I think it's just a little cute. So I'd, I kind of want to cut it still, but it's a power level question. Cultivator. Uh, Cultivator is fine. I feel like I would prefer this in a much more heavy land-based deck. At 35 lands, I don't really see you having lands to discard often that you don't want in play. Deadbridge Goliath, as much as I want to say much like the Locust, uh, this is just kind of cute. I will say a 5-5 five, five for 4 that you purposely want to give menace and run into people is honestly not that bad. The scavenge here is hefty by scavenging this and putting 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on something and creating a 5-5 five, five insect token with your commander out is really really good so dead bridge goliath is a card i really do like and i think it does fit here carrion uh grub i really like i feel like i'm not sure what the ceiling is in the current setup of the deck but i do like that you can reasonably get it to like five or six power i think the six is the highest at the moment and you can kind of edit your deck if you wanted that num number to be higher but at the moment I think that's cool. It works very much on theme. Once again, Menace is particularly strong. The Mill, this is perfect. I think this is a very good card. Uh, Canoptech Tomb Sentinel enters exile one, enters the battlefield from a graveyard. Exile Cannon. I think, I don't really like this. I think I've seen this before and I was never quite impressed with it. I think it's interesting like maybe in the Zask's deck where you have an easier way to reanimate it by just casting it or in another kind of I'm thinking I'm thinking like um, Chainer or something like that where you can cast this a little easier from your graveyard I like it a lot more but if you're playing this fairly and unearthing it for seven you're gonna be incredibly unhappy because it's just a 4-3 Vigilance um, insect in the meantime, you don't want to be using Reanimate, Unearth, any of these cards. Also, the other cards that you have, such as Unsealed and Necropolis, or other abilities that pull creatures from your graveyard back into your hand, aren't very good here because it won't trigger it. You have to, you have to reanimate it for it to get this ability. So in this current build, I'd like to cut it if I can. Uh, the Scarab Swarm, uh, Swarm, 
uh, exile target player's graveyard. So this one is this one's a lot better here. I do really like that we get a bunch of flying one ones. I think this is good. I think this is fine. I wish it wasn't four mana. I think this card could have been fine at three mana. The fact that this is a five dollar card is kind of surprising to me. There's a lot better ways to exile all your opponent's graveyards or just play Pachuca Bog. However, on the theme in Insect Print Kindred, this is very, very good. Do we use this on ourselves? I don't think so. I think we lose too much to target ourselves to get a trigger, and I think that's okay. I think there is a limit on those kind of abilities, and we'd rather just, you know, target someone else and make a bunch of tokens. And there's going to be a bunch of times, sorry, I'm going to harp on this a bit more, that this doesn't make very many insects, and I think that's fine. I think with the kind of token swarm aspect to this deck, I think you're kind of fine just making two or three, or even like an additional, yeah, just like two, having three creatures out of this. I think you're fine with that. They're all relevant creature types, and with flying is really nice. Stinging Cave Crawler. Whenever. Okay. This is close, right? Like, I do like its ability. I think you could reasonably keep the Descend going. The Death Nudge is interesting. The Menace... I wish it had one plus one plus one on it. And maybe that's something that I should have put more attention to, is having a few plus one plus one abilities across, or pl uh, like plus one plus one counters, or um, name a creature type, name insect, these creatures grow. Because these creatures, like this card... Oops, past it I went in the wrong direction this card if it was a 2-4 death touch then you give it menace I really like that because it guarantees that they have to spend they lose two cards to destroy this creature while they also just lose while you draw a card so you're really you're very much so up on this exchange and so if we can reliably grow this creature I think I really really do like it I think it's I think this is a good one that we want to keep, but it does it does catch my eye that I'd like to grow these creatures a little bit. Moving on, uh, Scoot Swarm is a fantastic card. Once again, with the low amount of lands and uh, we have no fetch lands, it seems at the moment. Even even like bad fetch lands would make this card better, but at the moment, uh, that's all we have. We need more lands, at least go up to 36 for Scoot Swarm to reliably get better, though if we get ramp that puts uh, lands into play, that kind of makes up for this. Old Rustine is cute. I find this to be such a funny card, and I think this is a really good place to put it, so I'm a big fan. I think the fact that we're gonna get uh, creatures most often is really good. I wish it milled more. I will say because it's an ETB and an upkeep trigger, it's very good. It's one of those creatures that I often look at and I'm like, oh, this is so good to be, uh, so close to being such a strong card. And it's very good as it is, but it could have been so much stronger with one, you know, one addition to the text or something. But still, I like this. I think you should keep it. Uh, Nantuko Shaman. I think for sure this is too cute. Uh, this is a card where you get a draw ability if you pay more mana and wait. And I don't think that's really, really good. I think if you have cards like, you know, Aether Vial or, um, you know, like some kind of uh, creatures to tap in. Cause like, if you use this with a bunch of creatures that tap for mana, you still get the card draw. But that's a lot of work for just drawing a card. I think this is a pretty low payout payoff for this effort. And with that in mind, I think it's too cute. The Nantuko Elder, it is ramp in our colors. I think that's fine. Uh, Hornet Nest, once again, I wish we can deal damage to it. Um, this is a card because it's a defender, the menace we get from our commander is just meaningless. So I don't really like this here and I think it can be cut. No one will attack into this, I guess is to, uh, something worth saying. This is kind of like, um, it's like a no mercy, but almost worse because some players will just trade the hornet's nest or just remove it before, uh, like with some kind like with swords or something, which, you know, you could say, uh, well, curse, they use swords to plowshares on Hornet's Nest. Isn't that good for me? Yeah, but like, if you're playing Hornet's Nest, you really want it to do its thing. And most likely they're doing that so they can attack you. So it's not really gonna work out in your favor very, uh, very much. I just, I don't think this is a card that's gonna do, do anything for you outside of Blasphemous Act, which you can't play, or any form of red damage. I, I just think this is the wrong deck for this kind of ability. Ewit, as mentioned before, fantastic card, very happy. Carrion Locust. 
definitely, definitely too cute. As always, you know, we have to get these cards out of our own graveyard. And here, this exiles the, your opponent's graveyard. It's one card. It gives you a 2-1 for three. This is just not where we want to be, and we can toss this out. Undead Butler is interesting to me. Uh, I think not only is one of those cards that strangely triggers twice, which doesn't work with our commander in one turn, but works with other abilities. Still, um, actually, this does trigger twice. That's really interesting. I need to keep this in mind. I've been working with Insidious Roots in other formats, and the fact that this triggers twice is very interesting to me. Okay, I will, I will keep that in mind. But here, I think it's perfect. I think the fact that it mills, it brings your creatures back, um, the fact that you can uh, use it to get to itself, triggers it on once, and then gets you two triggers off of Insidious Roots. Really, really nice. Great card. I think it can do a lot. I like it here. Nanteco uh, Tracer. This is close. This, if this was a one mana one one, maybe, and a two mana two one, two mana just feels a little too much for this to be more than just cute, but I really do like that it creates an insect, or if it had one more ability, but it creates an insect, it puts like, it just puts a land at the bottom or like any card just out of your graveyard you don't care about onto the bottom of your deck and with your commander, you generate uh, another uh, insect. However, outside of having your commander out, this is just a two one for, uh, for two and that can like hate one opponent's card out of their graveyard. I don't know. I don't really see it. If you were like a combo deck and this allowed you to buy back cards, perhaps I would like this, but you're not that kind of deck. You want things in your graveyard. So overall, this is too cute. It's really neat how it works. Don't get me wrong. I really like how it works. It just doesn't do enough. Crawl Whipcracker is interesting. I, I, I give it a pass because it is a 3-2 with reach and sometimes it'll blow up a very, very relevant token. Uh, but I think sometimes it's just gonna, you know, snipe a treasure or snipe a clue token. And is that enough? Traditionally, we don't think treasures or clue tokens are worth an actual card. So you're kind of, depending on what happens to the 3-2, you are on the back of the exchange. But a 3-2 menace reach, even though you're, the reach doesn't matter if you're attacking. Yeah, that's true. Menace and reach don't work well together. But a 3-2 Menace is a decent stat line. For two mana, I do like it. I think you should keep it here as one of your more efficient uh, insects. On the other side, once again, they both crawl. Yeah, they're both crawl. This is a 3-2 Reach once again. Once again, ignore the Reach. We'll just replace it with Menace. But um, the fact that this ETVs and can snipe a flying creature, I do, I do like this. And... I think especially on certain commanders, this is very good. If this had haste, which we could put uh, Verdant Catacombs into here, Verdant Catacombs, no, Concordant Crossroads, sorry, into here to give your creatures haste. I like it a bit more because it grows and immediately can attack. But as it is, I think this is fine. Once again, very aggressively costed, three, two for two, immediately snipes a flying creature, which if this is uh, bigger than it's like, you know, if it's a one, one or something, you get to keep, it has one power, you get to keep your creature. Otherwise it's just removal that's insect flavored and who doesn't mind that. I just heard that out loud. I don't know if I like how that sounded. And insect flavored, ugh. Durable coil bug, kind of cute. Uh, it's a two, two. Every time you return it into your hand from the graveyard, you make a three, three insect token. Is five mana worth making a 3-3 insect token? I don't think so. The deck will inevitably need some filler cards and this is not the worst filler card. It can chump forever. Uh, you can just throw it in the graveyard and keep it in mind later. It's just a lot of mana. This deck has kind of a mana problem as it is and I think this is causing some problems to uh, need to do this just to get a 3-3. Drudge Beetle, on the other hand, I like it way more. This is just one time six mana, but just the addition of being able to put two plus one plus one counters on a creature, I think that's very relevant. So in terms of filler cards, like don't get me wrong, this is still a bad card, I think, but out of the two of them, I like this way more. It's a much better filler card. So I would keep this for sure. Stitcher's Supplier, who is an incredibly cute anime person. Uh, perfect, right on theme, no problems there. Scoop Mob. Uh, if you had five or more lands, kind of hard to do, but if we put enough ramp, I think we can make it happen. 
we were at the last ones, Haywire Mite, fantastic insect. Costa Caterpillar, fantastic insect. And Skull Dweller is just okay. It's a 1-1 death touch. Once again, we've got that menace death touch problem. I don't particularly like it. I would like this to be a 2-2 if we're going to give it uh, menace. So that's my opinion on that. I would cut that. And that's all of our creatures. Now, looking very, very quickly through the rest of the deck, I generally really like the rest of the deck. I've been kind of hard on a lot of the creatures, but I think that's what we were here to do. Everything else feels very, very good. And I'm going to have a bunch of suggestions that we're going to get into that are more about specifically what Amzu does and a little less specifically on Insect Kindred. But we'll see how it all works out. So... Uh, for this time, I've decided to kind of go in a CMC order, and we'll see if that works out. I couldn't, uh, I didn't want to divide this into sections of what cards do, so we're just going from lowest mana to highest mana. And I think with a bonus round at the end. But analyze the pollen. So, this is a new card, Collect Evidence 8, which feels pretty reasonable in your deck. I think, generally, you're going to want to, ca uh, you're going to want to remove lower cost cards that add up to 8, as opposed to 1 like one of the Eldrazi, because when you do that, you lose the eight. Actually, no, you want to do that because then you can create an insect, right? We're okay with that. Regardless, this has a really nice removing uh, cards from your graveyard effect uh, as intended. I think this commander is intended to use with uh, collect evidence, but this is what I really like. One, search your library for basic land card. That's just the base of this card and in a land, in a deck that kind of needs some help. I do like this here, but I really like instead search your library for a creature. And the reason I like that is because the best creature in your deck is actually the Planeswalker Grist, right? If you can play Grist, if you can plus one, there's a very high chance you're gonna get multiple triggers, multiple uh, loyalty counters, right? And, and with that, have a very tough Grist to survive that you can minus five right after, or just have a really tough Planeswalker. So that's one of, I think, two tutors I have, and you could play more creature tutors because Grist is a creature in the deck. So with that in mind, I really like, ooh, I'm going the wrong direction. I really, really like Analyze the Pollen for one mana grab Grist. Of course, you can use this to grab a utility land, use this to grab any creature. I think this is a very easy inclusion. Also, at being like 48 cents, very easy inclusion. Here's one uh, that we're actually, one of those double-sided gods that we're actually playing for the backside. Egon, God of Death, is fine. It's a 6-6 death touch, but it's not really where we're at. I do think it's interesting that this can be used to trigger your commander, but it feels a little clunky. I much prefer just playing Throne of Death. Throne of Death for one black mana, at the beginning of upkeep, mill a card, which works in getting more and more of your deck into your graveyard. And then this ability that says, two in a black, exile a creature card from your graveyard, draw a card. I really like this because you can use this on your opponent's turns to not only draw that card, but trigger your commander, get a, you know, a sizable insect token uh, as an additional one that you would get because it's easy to get the one on your turn. This is one that can get you on your opponent's turns. So I do really, really like that. After that, this is our second tutor card, Mausoleum Secrets, very, very much in flavor. Uh, I do love that. And once again, uh, pretty much a universal tutor for black cards in your deck, but I really want this to grab Grist. And um, something that's notable I didn't even think of, if you have Grist in your graveyard and you remove it, it is a creature. Interesting. I think that doesn't work with all of these cards, but some of them do. Our commander cares about any card, but some of them do care only if a creature leaves. Regardless, Muslim Secrets, easy way to grab Grist, uh, very cheap card, I think it is worth playing. All right, here is a card I absolutely, absolutely love in green-black, especially in token or creature-based decks. Evolutionary Leap turns your tokens, or any creature that was going to die, into the next creature on top of your deck. So this is great as a kind of board clear prevention. If you have enough mana up that you know someone's gonna slam a board clear, you keep mana up. When they when they have to clear that board, uh, you then go ahead and turn all of your tokens, all of your creatures that are gonna die into more cards, as long as you have green mana. Very, very good. But there's also, much like Skull Clamp, which I didn't suggest, you should play Skull Clamp. Let, let's do that right now. Skull Clamp. Play Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp is very, very good in this deck. 
But like Skull Clamp, we are turning our, our tokens that, you know, every now and then we don't need as many, we're turning them into card draw, then specifically creature draw, which is pretty good. Uh, you're playing less creatures, so you get any, uh, so you're playing so many creatures, you get any creature, so it's almost just a draw. But depending on deck, sometimes this is better than just a draw because it guarantees a creature. Harvest Season is the ramp card I would like you to be playing. In addition to those two mana ramps, like I said, this one is particularly good because it is very, very easy to trigger, especially with enough tokens, especially with Menace. There's a very high chance that a lot of your creatures will survive a combat. You slam Harvest Season, you ramp five or six lands, and you're pretty much set for the rest of the game. So I do particularly like this. This is a card that doesn't do anything if you don't have tapped creatures, but in a deck like, thing, like this, I think it's worth the risk. After this, Rowan's Grim Search, um, we're missing actually a lot of draw. I didn't go ahead and say the my spiel, but you could definitely be playing, you know, uh, what are they? The Knight's Whisper, uh, Sign in Blood, Read the Bones, uh, etc. Phyrexian, I think you are playing Phyrexian Arena, Greed, those cards. You're in black, you can draw a lot of cards. But the stronger ones that I'm suggesting, one of which is Rowan's Grim Search. Obviously the bargain is incredibly easy to get. Uh, then you get to put cards from the top of your deck into the graveyard and then draw two and lose two. Just overall, incredibly powerful card. If you haven't picked up play sets, pick up more play sets. When you're in black and you have access to tokens, uh, this is the card to play, I think. Endless Cock Cockroaches is very, very much so noticeably missing from the deck. I think uh, this is really, really good because you just let this die or you kill it yourself and then it dies and then it removes itself from the graveyard so it always triggers itself. Very, very strong, very simple card. Uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. And as a nice kind of perk, you can just play this as a constant blocker. This is a filler card for sure, but it has a much higher um, ceiling. Ashnod's Altar is a card that I want to put as a sack outlet that I think is kind of missing here. If you really wanted to, I think you could play the other two that I love to say also, Carrion Feeder and Viscera Seer. All of these are very, very strong. You're in a deck that can really benefit from sacrifices, but I don't want to make this Aristocrats deck. So with that in mind, Ashnod's Altar is the one I want to suggest. This is very powerful. You have tons of tokens. This will help you cast your Eldrazi. It'll help you cast your big spells. Chalk Outline is the other card of this effect I'd like you to play. This is one over one or more creature cards leave the graveyard. You get a 2-2 detective creature token, and then you investigate. Now, this card can be used with infinite combos with um, certain cards, mainly Oval Chase Daredevil with a discard outlet. But here, I just want to suggest this, just as it is, you know, as you are doing the thing your deck wants to do, this will benefit from it. Like this is just like an alternative commander. It'll create tokens. It'll give you uh, card draw, just very, very strong. And with your commander out, it just does even more. So note that this does creature cards specifically, whereas your commander says cards. So there is something to be said about the difference of them, but I think this needs to be played in for sure. Lich Knight's Conquest. This one is very, very interesting to me. Uh, this works kind of in theme, but also kind of strangely. It basically turns tokens into reanimation. Now, generally, the problem here is that we tend to say one or more. So you get, you get one trigger out of this with all of the things in your deck that trigger off of things leaving your graveyard. However, this is an incredibly powerful card. This is one of many five cost cards that I want to suggest that are very, very powerful. This is like a one-sided living end where you turn all of the tokens on your battlefield into your army, which is just exceedingly powerful. Now, some of the tokens you get from your commander are gonna be bigger than the creatures you could bring back. So just be careful with that. Just be very vigilant on which ones you do bring back. But I think this is a very, very powerful mass reanimation spell. Uh, insect that was very, very noticeably missing. I'm, I'm gonna double check to know that it's missing because I keep double, yeah, because we didn't see it earlier, but um, absolutely, Mazarek, where where are you? I love you so much. Mazarek is one of, I think, the strongest insects 
especially in black green in the game where whenever a player sacrifices another permanent you get a plus one plus one counter on your board very very easy to trigger off yourself or others Ashnod's altar the aristocrat cards whatever you would like all of a sudden your board is enormous and you are swinging for the fences so very very strong card does a lot with the menace that we get from our commander especially the flying menace once again makes master Egg very very difficult to block properly another five mana card i think we have at least two more uh, I know usually I don't like putting these in because they match our commander, but these are really, really good cards, and that is why I like to suggest them. Moldervine Reclamation. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain one life and draw a card. This is anti-board wipe. This is sacrifice. This is any death, anything. This card is one of the most powerful spells in the colors. If you resolve this and you have a board and you have the ability to sacrifice or skull clamp, a number of different things, you are gonna draw the majority of your deck. This is just such a powerful card. You might deck out sometimes, but it is worth the cost. It is five mana, that is tough, but I think it's worth playing. Our last five mana card is Palace Siege. Palace Siege is a very interesting card that I think I never see. And I think that's a bit of a mistake. It is very much so this cons ability here. Dragons is cute, just draining your opponents constantly, but it is cons that I like. The beginning of your upkeep, you could return target card from your graveyard to your hand. This is the easiest way to trigger your commander, but also just works really, really well with a number of creatures, such as a sack outlet and ewit, such as a number of creatures that die and put themselves in the graveyard. Uh, anything that sacrifices itself, anything you've milled over and you just want back in your hand to cast again or to cast for the first time, Palace Siege is very, very good. And there are a pair of cards that I think work well with it and the entire deck, which are the next ones, if memory serves. Yeah, these are, if nothing else, actually I shouldn't say if nothing else, there's a lot of these cards I want you to play, but these two are very good. And this is Troll of Kazadun and Generous Ant. Now, why these two cards? Um, Pretty straightforwardly, uh, one of the biggest problems with cards that, like, you know, decks that want to pull things out of the graveyard is getting those cards into the graveyard and doing so in a way that isn't like spending more resources here or there to do so. Troll of Kazadoom and the Generous Ent are both really good because they have the, the land cycling abilities for one mana. So you just trade them for a land and they go into the graveyard. But the thing that makes them even better is that this is a repeatable process. So you put it back into your hand and then you cycle again. You put it back into your hand and you cycle again. You create that loop where you are going up in cards and you're getting the land drops that you need. But notably, both of these cards are six mana, which means every time you do this, you are creating a seven power and toughness insect token with your commander out. This is something we can do later just by returning it to our hand. It's something we can cycle early. There's so many things we can do with this and they are both, I would say, pretty decent creatures to reanimate as well. So I think these definitely need to be in there. They put, they take a little pressure off of the ramp and the amount of lands you need to play. And I think they are very, very strong. Finally, the last few cards I want to suggest are kind of boring, but I think they need to be suggested. And they are the two pairs of Witch's Oven, Cauldron Familiar, or Underworld Cookbook, and Opal Chase Daredevil. And these cards do the same thing, basically, where when you have both of them, they will create a loop where you just keep bringing back the card over and over. Witch's Oven keeps reanimating the Cauldron Familiar every time, draining your opponents each time you do the loop. Whereas the Underworld cookbook, a cookbook will create, will discard Oval Chase from your hand and you're up a food every time you do this. It doesn't matter, both of these cards are really, really good at continuously triggering your commander. Now, obviously, the Underworld Cookbook and Oval Chase Daredevil side is the stronger side, but you could play both if you want to. They're just not very much on the insect theme. They're not very much a part of the deck. They're just something you do on the side. And when you do it, your opponents go, oh, okay, I know what you're doing. Take it as you may, I think what's really cool about both these cards is that they both work at instant speed, which means you do this on your opponent's turns. So you just get another insect token out of your commander per turn cycle, which I really, really like. And I think that's generally it. Those are my suggestions. Uh, I like this first draft. I can see that it's very insect themed. And as you me mentioned yourself and you were wondering, Alexa, there are cards here that I do think kind of need to go and are a little cute for what they do. 
However, I will note that the cards that I've asked, uh, I've told you to take out and the cards I've told you to uh, put in do reduce the amount of insects in the deck. Uh, that is something worth considering. If you want this to be insect kindred, you might not want to do that. Uh, however, that also does change the power level of the deck. So I think the first thing, that's the direction I would start with on choosing the power level, because if this is a low power deck, then none of these are too cute. In fact, they're just cute enough. Because if we were playing low power commander and you play query beetle and you get a land and then you trigger your commander to get a one one. I love that. That's super, that's cute, but not too cute, right? That's, that's a low power play. That's a lot of fun. Likewise, you know, I was talking about the tracer. Nantaku tracer is so cool at a low power table. That, that ability to play this and then you just bottom one of your graveyard cards and trigger your commander, that's, a, that's so much fun in a deck like this. So with something like this, I think power level is the direction you want to be thinking of a lot. And if you want to introduce higher power level cards, unfortunately, we have to cut out the lower stuff. But if you want to keep it low, this stuff is great. I hope this video was very, very useful to you. Thank you, Lexa, as always, for supporting the channel. And honestly, you said earlier that the, uh, I said this in the last video too, I love these clue uh, commanders. They're really, really weird. Like, when have you seen anything like this? I will say for something that's worth noting is that I do feel like, much like another insect, uh, flying insect that I like, I feel they worked really hard to make this a little too tricky to break. Like, it has so much text and so much to do, and it's still a 5-5. Five five. If this creature was four mana, if this creature had lower power or toughness or didn't give menace, I think it would be stronger. And I think they pushed really hard to make this a very specific type of creature. I wish it was just a little weaker in order to be easier to cast. But all that being said, I think it's a really cool ability. And when you play Amzu, you're playing a deck that no one really plays. Like, you know, no other black green decks kind of work in this way. Grist or Zask or other insect tribal decks, sorry, insect kindred decks work similarly, but not the same way. All right, thank you so much for the deck and good luck. Thank you so much for watching. This video is brought to you by viewers like you and people on my Patreon. If you'd like to send me another draft of this deck or any deck, there is a link in the video description down below. And if you'd like to make your deck one of my donation decks I work on, there is a link there too. Finally, if you'd like to like, comment, subscribe, I would be very appreciative. It helps the channel quite a bit. Thank you and good luck in brewing and building.